Hey, this is Stu Man Rides. We're out here at the streets of Willow Springs with the California Superbike School, and we're going to talk with Dylan Code about how you can warm up your tires, what it means to warm up your tires, and how heat affects your grip level, and how you can warm up your tires and avoid that cold tire crash. <music> So here we are. We're at the streets of Willow Springs with Dylan Code uh, at the California Superbike School, and we're going to talk about tire temperature and tire grip. So Dylan, uh, what do we need to do to make sure that our tires are nice and warm, and how does that affect how much grip we have? All right. Well, so the first thing we would talk about, I guess it's it's pretty obvious that as rubber gets warmer, it gets softer. Okay, and what I think some people don't realize is that if we have a cold tire, right, okay, we know it's going to be harder, but if we look really closely, let's say this is the tire and this is the surface, we can see the surface has got these peaks and valleys, and a cold tire is really just resting on those peaks, and if you have, let's say, an apparent contact patch of, let's say, this big, your, your actual contact patch is going to be a lot smaller. It could effectively be even one-tenth of that, depending on the type of tire, et cetera. There are a lot of variables, of course. We just want to give uh, the viewers an idea that as a tire warms up, what it ends up doing is deforming and actually pressing into these nooks and crannies so as to give you more surface area to grip. Now, that's not the only way a tire grips, but this is a, a key element, and they call it keying, as if you were putting a key into a lock, it's where they're interlocking with each other. So with a warmer tire, this keying becomes a lot more efficient. And whereas you may have an apparent contact patch of let's just say this big, because it's deforming and getting down into those depressions, your effective contact patch actually might even be larger than that. Because it's actually covering more ground as you go over all those little nooks and crannies and stuff. There's actually four different ways a tire grips. The two main ones that, that I would mention right now would be the the keying effect where basically the tire squishes down into the peaks and depressions and the other thing is is just what we'll call adhesion and adhesion is, is interesting it's actually a temporary chemical bond between the tire surface and whatever it's put up against and of course that adhesion that that chemical bond is going to get better a good example of this would be Laguna Seca. Laguna Seca, if you look at that track, and if you actually go out into turn 11, for example, sit down on the track and rub your hand on the surface, it's going to feel very, very smooth. And if you look really closely, you see these milky colored stones that are polished. They're very, very smooth. You could rub your hand on it for 10 minutes and, and wouldn't even turn red. And so we've got a bit of a problem there, right, is, is we've got these, these smooth, smooth peaks. And that's where the keying will occur to a, to a certain extent, but we don't have any jagged, real pronounced jagged edges for it to bite into. But if the temperature is really high, you will get that adhesion between the tire and those, those smooth, rounded stones that are in the aggregate there. So what you're saying, to make it really short, his tires are sticky. <laughs> <laughs> tires are sticky. And the, and the hotter uh, they get, the, the stickier they are. Yeah, and then there, you're going to have some tracks that, let's say, are not very abrasive, and that's where, that's where you really need the heat. Mm -hmm. There are other tracks where it's, it's just very abrasive. It's just very jagged, and you're going to get that king. That you're going to get the, the tire really, really locking in with the surface, and, and that's less of a problem. So. so Absolutely, we know that a warmer tire is going to grip the pavement better because it has more surface area that's able to ad uh, change or adhere, deform to meet that the surface that it's running on. So, how do we get heat in the tire? All right. So, the first thing is is when you when you tell someone to warm their tires up. Let's say we have a, a pretty new rider. You say, "Hey, warm your tires up." What does that exactly mean? That means take it easy for a few laps. What does take it easy for a few laps mean? And it, it's something that is more sort of trial and error unless you have at least some loose guide of what to actually do. 
Now, that was a bit of, a, of an issue for me because just over the years, you end up getting the feel for it. But what do you tell someone who's brand new? And I did a little bit of work. I, I've been back and forth with the Dunlop tire engineers actually for in the last 10 years, just asking them all sorts of questions about tires and, and learning quite a bit. And what I was able to do was uh, get them to provide me with a graph that showed rubber temperature and coefficient of friction. So once you have that, you can model up a sort of a rough idea of how much lean angle you can actually have based on how cold or warm the rubber is. So what, now this is obviously just a guide. It's not going to be accurate, strictly speaking, like it's just a guide. But let's just say we've got a tire temp that's all the way down at 32 degrees, OK? We figured out roughly that about 10 degrees of lean is all you're going to be able to do. So let's just say it's a really cold day. Your tires are really cold. Uh, you live back east and you want to go to work or whatever. Your first turn that you go through, do not lean it over any more than, by this guide, 10 degrees. 11 degrees and you're on the pavement, right? But you get the idea that, OK, that's, that's what we mean by warm your tires at that level of temperature, right? Now, as it comes up, the next level, we have 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And this says 17 degrees of lean. So obviously, the bike isn't going to, or the tires are not immediately going to go for, uh, from 32 to 50 degrees. But as you roll through the corners, what's going to happen is the carcass is going to flex. Why does it flex? Well, we can see that when a tire is touching the ground, it's slightly flat where it meets the road. It's not always perfectly round. And it's that little area where it's buckling that we get flexing. And flexing is actually where we get the heat. So let's imagine we had a, a spoon, a metal spoon, and we wanted to heat it up. If we rubbed it on our jeans, it would eventually get hot. But if we bent it, it would get hot really fast. And that's the same thing we're talking about uh, when we're talking about warming up a tire. Now, Let's just say it's very, very cold. Let's say it's a 50 degree day. So what, what this is saying is we can't lean it over any more than 17 degrees, at least for the first turn. So as you're riding, some heat will come into it. How fast? There's too many variables for me to you know, quickly outline. But that would mean that, let's say, the next turn, since it's on the other side of the tire, we'd also want it to be at 17 degrees. But it's, you've gained a little bit of heat. So then maybe 18, 19. 19, 20, 21, and as the temperature of the tires comes up, then the amount of lean angle that we can carry will, of course, go up as well. So Dylan, before you had mentioned to me uh, as a side that the, there's a feel, a way of kind of telling, or a feel that you get from the bike that you can actually notice as the tires come up to temperature. Yeah, I, I basically call it line compliance. So if you've got a cold tire, the bike will not comply to the line you're putting it on. And what does that mean? Well, uh, for a given bike rider combination and a given lean angle, the bike should form a certain arc. Now, if the tires are cold and they're not gripping very well, but you're not crashing, right? You're just, you're on cold tires, you're not, you're not leaned over very far. The bike for that lean angle will not carve as tight of a line as it would if the tires were really warm. So rider goes into a corner, tires are cold, leans it over X amount. They're expecting the bike to go over here, but it doesn't. It's still going, but it's, it's just carving a slightly wider arc. So that means, OK, we don't have the heat in the tires. And at that point, we wouldn't push it further. We just, OK, finish that turn without any strong acceleration and know that going into the next corner, you're going to be quite timid, and you shouldn't expect that thing to really comply with that line. But then, as you continue at, let's just say, that same lean angle, the bike will start complying. Right. Then we know we can add a little bit more lean angle. But if the bike is just not going on the line that you would expect it to for the lean angle that you have it at, then that is a clear message the bike's trying to send you. You don't have the grip. And that's where we see some riders. They'll go in. They go, well, this isn't, the bike isn't going where I want it to go, so we'll just lean it over more, and then suddenly it goes. Yeah. So how do we go about getting heat into the tires, right? So we know that the tire, the flex of the carcass is what causes the tire to heat. So what's the best methodology if we're at a track day and we're going out onto a cold track? Maybe we don't have tire warmers on. And uh, how do we bring those tires up to temperature as quickly as possible so that we can get, put ourselves in a little bit safer scenario? 
Okay, well, I'll first start off with what you don't want to do. Let's say someone has got a clear in mind, they, they definitely want to get their tires warm. <clears throat> so what they'll do is they'll go pretty slow down the straights, and then they'll go your, their normal speed in the corner. We actually want quite the opposite. <clears throat> Long, hard acceleration, straight up and down, braking. Smooth, even acceleration, smooth, even braking, nothing abrupt. And what that'll do is that'll put flex into the front and rear tire. Then tiptoe through the first corner. Nice strong acceleration and deceleration at, at very little or no lean angle. Tiptoe through the next corner and then gradually increase the lean angle roughly, you know, as is illustrated here. And then you can bring the tire temperature up. So what about weaving back and forth really, really fast? So what, there's been a number of, of uh, I would say informal studies, but um, it's pretty easy to do that, that weaving back and forth will give you friction on the surface, but not on the core. So it's actually not as effective yeah. as flexing the carcass. That's going to be a lot better. So it's a lot easier to load that tire and cause that carcass to flex by hard braking or hard acceleration as opposed to hard cornering, which you don't have the grip to the corner hard when the tires are cold. Exactly. And you also have to bear in mind that that will heat up the tire and that'll heat up mainly the center, the center of the front and rear tire. And of course, that will, that will move its way out onto the shoulders, but it doesn't mean that the edges are going to be warm. So there, there's still, you still have to, even if you're accelerating, decelerating quite hard and tiptoeing through the corners, you still have to let that gradually, that increase. gradually increase. Otherwise, it's, you're, you're, again, you're taking chances. And it's nice if you've got tire warmers, but in some cases you don't, or maybe you're commuting, you're going to meet your friends on a, on a cold day, or you go on a, uh, you're going to ride up in, up in the mountains in the springtime, and you go have lunch, and then you know, you're in the shade, and everything cools down, and you've got you to be aware of that. I think another thing also is the most obvious thing that's easy to overlook is if you're riding on the track, how many rights, how many lefts do you have? You go to a track like uh, Thunderbolt, New Jersey, we've got some rights, and then we got one left in a chicane where we see a lot of scrape, scrape right. marks. And then we've got uh, another right, another right, and then another left after that. But th there aren't that many lefts, and that can really catch people out, especially when they go through a series of rights and the bike's feeling really nice. <clears throat> and then they drop it into a, a left, yeah. expecting the same thing. Sometimes Laguna Seca can, can get that way. Yeah, we have, we have a very similar uh, uh, experience at the Supermoto School, right? So to, at the Supermoto School, for which I coach, we have uh, a dirt section and you come out onto the track and so your tires are dirty and it's all right turns, right? And then you come into the first left and we nickname that high side left because everybody's, they're, they're great on the right hand side but then you flick it left and you got no traction. So it's very, very similar with, with the temperature of your tires. If you're out on a track and you have all right hand corners and that right side of the tire comes up to temperature and then you go to use that same lean angle and flick it into a left, oftentimes it won't hold. Yeah, exactly. So, excellent. So let's talk a little bit about different types of tires. Um, race tires, track day tires, there's so many different kinds right now. I think um, Dunlop offers, what, the Q3? Is there kind of street tire? Yeah, the Q Q3 Plus is pretty much your jack of all trades. Right. It's, it's, the, it's the tire you can put on and pretty much do anything with. You can commute with it because it's got a harder center band. Right. You can do track days on it. It's not going to offer the, the ultimate grip, but it's got good longevity. So it's, it's your good sort of uh, beginner's tire that can kind of do everything, especially if someone's commuting and maybe doing a track day every once in a while. And then they have the Q4, which is their track day tire. Yeah, they might call that a super sport tire. That's, that's, your, that's your twisties tire. Mm -hmm. That's your track day tire. And that one happens to warm up very quick. They specifically designed it to warm up very quick. And then uh, they have the race tire, right? Which is all different sorts of compounds and things. But so how is the, um, how, how does the grip versus temperature algorithm work on race tires versus uh, uh, track day tires and so on? All right, so this is a basic graph that the Dunlop engineers provided me with. So we've got grip going up this way and temperature going this way. So we've got the, the Q3, which is your jack of all trades tire that pretty much works in, in all environments well. 
And then you've got the Q4, which is a, a big step up from that. However, why would someone just not choose that Q4? It's got better grip. Well, okay, that's at the, at the expense of your long longevity. So it's gonna grip better, but it's not gonna last as long. Then we've got something entirely different. We've got a race tire here. So we'll see that the grip level is quite low and actually even below your street tires. But then as the temperature comes up, the grip really comes up. If you look at the chemistry of, of the street tires versus the race tire, they they got nothing to do with each other. It's an entirely different type of rubber. And it's really nice. It's a treat to give yourself a nice hot set of ra uh, race tires. Right. And they're, they're beautiful, but of course you can't use them on the street if they're slicks. And they're really not gonna work well unless you've got them on warmers. Okay, if you have an experienced rider who knows how to warm up a tire, they can go out even on a cold day with slicks and if they're, they're patient, then they can slowly bring the temperature up to where it's going to grip as well as it's gonna grip for that day. As a matter of fact, you could have somebody, let's say we have two twin brothers, one of them's got, uh, you know, they both got slicks, one of them got warmers, the other one doesn't, right? One guy goes out stone cold, the other guy's, guy goes out piping hot. After about three laps, the temperature, let's say it's a really cold day, the temperatures will go down for the guy who's got the warmers and right. up for the guy who doesn't have them, and they'll meet in the center. Um, it's just really the, those tire warmers are gonna avoid those, those early first or two or three lap cold tire crashes. Now, it's my understanding too that uh, as temperature goes up with like a track day or a street tire that the grip will level off and possibly even drop off as it gets hotter. Yeah, so what, they're, what the engineers provided me with is a basic, a basic view that somewhere past around 210 degrees, then they'll, they'll end up getting what most people describe as greasy. So it'll drop down a bit. I've, I've had a few really hot days. Uh, I remember one time I was at uh, Phillip Island with our school down there, and it was one of these days, it was uh, about 115 degrees air temp, so the track temp was way higher. And the uh, the tires just couldn't handle it. They just got they got quite slippery. It wasn't that they were completely uh, unpredictable, but you could just tell that the the grip level had taken a, a definite drop. Do you th do you know if the drop off occurs at a lower temperature for the street tire versus the race tire? Like I would assume that the race tire probably you can run it a little bit hotter still get decent grip out of it where when that street tire gets really hot, it might drop off a little bit at a lower temperature. Yeah, it's my experience that the, that the street tires will drop off at a lower temperature, but it's still pretty high. Yeah. Like a, a Dunlop Q3 can work uh, great, you know, all the way up to 180 degrees, no problem. Yeah. Out here in the desert at Willow Springs, we can push those limits on hot days, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, cool, anything else that you wanted to say? There's a lot of different variables, but I think the, the easiest conclusion to come to is you need to bring your tire up to temperature. You need to take it step by step. If we were to come up with round figures, I would say if you were properly bringing it up on a sort of medium to cool day in temperature, I would say that you would get after about two and a half laps, it's going to be in the neighborhood of what it's going to get up to. So I would, I would say give yourself two and a half laps of very gently increasing the lean angle. And then after about two and a half laps, you know, it depends on the track and, and the, the length, et cetera, you're gonna have the grip be about as good as it's gonna get. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks a bunch, Dylan. Okay. All right, All right so I wanted to thank Dylan Code a bunch. Dylan, I really appreciate you helping me out uh, and doing this video for my channel. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button, especially. Um, that like button will help me uh, defeat the YouTube algorithm and get more views, which that's what I'm doing it for is views. So anyway, um, yeah, thanks very much to Dylan Code and the California Superbike School for having me out and helping me with this video. I hope this helps you avoid those cold tire crashes either on your way to work or your first lap around on a track day. So again, thanks a lot for watching Stu Man Rides.